Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Uh, we got a lot of news to discuss. We got some Snyderverse aftermath to discuss. We got some DC news. We got some Marvel news. We got some Kong news. We got news. One especially that I want to get into real quick at the end of the show that I'm very excited about, although I have my concerns. But before we get into all of those, um, we would like to ask all of you to please, if you'd like to help support the channel, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, share it with your friends. It really does help support the channel. Now, Brian, how you doing? Busy, man. It feels like, I mean, reopening is going on around the world, but it feels like the industry, the industry that we love is also reopening. You can just yeah. tell by the amount of stories that are hitting the, hitting the news every day. There's a lot going on. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Um, Let's get into it. Now, I'm not going to bore you with the details of what went on with the Snyder Cut. We already know. Let's start from the day it released. We all saw it. We all discussed it. And for the most part, we pretty much knew that this movie was going to be better than what was released in, I believe, 2017. Yeah. Was this better than the original release? Absolutely. Is this the best Justice League live action film we've ever seen? Absolutely. Why? Because it's the only live action Justice League we've ever seen. Now, if you want to include the animated films, in my opinion, the animated films are way better than this film. Does it, did this film need to be four hours? Hell no. I'd like to ask you, Brian, if this movie would have been released in the theaters, let's say a three hour film, because I'm pretty sure Zach would have uh, wanted this. Does this make possibly a billion dollars? You're saying no, and the, the, the 2017 version never happens. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think this, I think this would have been good enough. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think, I, I think maybe it reaches a billion. And for me, in my opinion, Justice League should have done, would have had to do more than a billion in order for be, in order for it to be successful. Because I, I think believe, it still would have fallen below what any of the Avengers movies did. Oh yeah, I think Ultron is the lowest at around one three. I think this probably, you know, I think what was Aquaman one one? Yeah, something like that. I think between Aquaman and Ultron. That's kind of what it feels like this. I mean, because the reality is if you're going to have a three hour R rated movie, there's only so high, like we saw with Joker, like that's kind of about the limit of what the, the, the movie going audience is going to sustain for an R rated long property. So I kind of think like that's a pretty good comparison. Yeah. Because I think this is this is more fun than Joker. Yeah. It's yeah, a bigger yeah. event because of the characters. Yeah. But it's not Avatar, you know, yeah. to draw a comparison of something that was three hours, but family friendly and groundbreaking that went to do 2.7 billion. It's not in that category of revolutionary filming. Yeah. So I kind of say like, yeah, one, 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 two. I think, yeah. it been, I think it would have been good enough for that. Yeah. And I just want to point this out for any of you people out there saying that this movie was better than Endgame or Infinity War. Get the hell out of here with that. No way. That is not, not a conversation I would have with anyone or debate that I would have with anyone. This is not better than those two films. Let's get that straight. So you get the, you get the Snyder Cut. Now, then, then you get a, a, a tweet from Zack Snyder giving his ideas of what else he wanted to do. Now the release of Snyder Cut has turned into release the Snyderverse. It's no longer about the Justice League and the DC universe. It's releasing Snyder's 
vision of his story arc. And the WB executives, some of the executives have been saying that this is, this was it. You got what you wanted. We're not doing any more of these. And I'm gonna come to you, Brian, in a second, because I want to, I want you to elaborate a little bit more on some of the executives that have been saying this and whether or not they have that sort of pull to really, um, put a nail in it. So you got that going on, but it's a Snyderverse, right? And you have the WB executive saying that this is not happening. And to respond to that, now you have fans review bombing, supposedly a great movie. I haven't seen it. You haven't seen it, but we've heard some great reviews for it in Godzilla versus Khan. So my thing is, listen, man. WB, at some point, if you're a business, Brian, you're not going to let someone else, regardless of what, what business it'll bring in for you, there, there's a line that you're not really willing to cross in order to appease a certain fan base, because they're not the majority. They're just a vocal, uh, they're just vocal fans about what they want. I have always said that if the WB wanted to continue the Snyderverse, that if they do, to continue it on, on HBO Max. And I would even charge them $50 to see it on demand if they really want it. You really want it? Okay, $50. Let's do it. What are your thoughts on this whole Snyderverse thing and the thing that they've been doing with the, the, the Godzilla versus Kong reviews? Tell me your thoughts on this. Wow, where to begin? All right, we got a lot to cover here. So there's, a, there's an expression in financial service. So if you work in the investment profession, there's a phrase that's called talking your own book. And what that means is you go around and you publicly make a statement in support of, in this case, usually a stock or a company, something that you own, something that, you, or something that you don't like, and you say something publicly to support your position, in hopes that other people in the community latch onto it and follow. Everybody involved in this equation is talking their own book. Let me break this down for you. I told you, and I told everyone on this show from the beginning, everything Zack Snyder was doing at the edge. So not the heart and soul of this movie, which we've discussed, but at the edge, the reshoots, the Easter eggs, all of his appearances on podcasts, social media drops, all of that was him talking his book, which is, I built this universe, I wrote the fully realized arc, and then he said all the right things, technically, which is, I don't expect to be able to make it, but he put it into the world, knowing, knowing that the people who supported his vision would immediately latch onto this, and, as, and if the audience was there for the Snyder Cut, that there was at least a chance this could happen in some form. Mm -hmm. I don't blame him because, as I said last time when we went through the movie, if I was him, I would have done the same thing, which is I would have said, like, I'm going to show all my cards. I'm going to leave it all hanging out there, but I'm going to give myself an opportunity. I'm going to give myself an opportunity for future paydays, for future work, for future notoriety. I'm going to give that a chance. So that's what he did. Mm -hmm. WB is talking their own book because we know they have it in for them. We know they don't like it. We don't, we know they want this to go away. 
So Ann Sarnoff, and you need to keep track of who is in what seat here because that matters a lot. So Ann Sarnoff, who is on the Warner Brothers theatrical side. Now, technically her title, I believe, is has a Warner Media title, but her background is in the film, the motion picture side of Warner Brothers. Comes out and does this interview in which she says, it's the completion of the trilogy. We're not doing the air cut of Suicide Squad and we're not doing any more Snyderverse. And she touches off a firestorm among the fan base. So she's talking, that's the book of her and Walter Hamada, at least, that we know. We can safely say those two people do not want anything to do with this ever again. Small problem though, Warner Media has put out these targets, which we talked about, for wanting to grow HBO Max and grow the overall business in the next five years. And my cynical response is if you didn't want this problem, then you shouldn't have signed up for it in the first place. No one held it. I mean, you're the ones who said, Let's go make this to Zach. You're the ones who gave him $70 million. Did you really think it was going to die yeah. with this, especially if it turned out to be pretty good, which it yeah. was? So then you have Casey Bloys, who runs HBO Max. Now, he's part of Warner Media, but he's not on the film side. He's only running the streaming service. And there's been these leaks and these rumors that HBO Max is thinking about wanting to move forward with the Snyderverse. They're offering him right. an exclusive deals. Right. Right. Now, why do you think Casey Boys and HBO Max might want that? Because they have targets to make over the next five years. And whether you like them or you don't like them, do you think having a couple more Zack Snyder Justice League universe properties in the next five years might help you hit your targets? Of course it will. No. So you got people under the same roof who are fighting with each other, it would seem. Because they're answering to the same parent who is saying, make good movies over here, bring us subscribers over here, yeah. and they can't all get along. So they're talking their book, too. And then on top of that, you have the fans, right? So the fans are with Zach. But I don't think the fans necessarily understand all the politics that we just laid out. They just see WB and Zach. They only see two mm. people parties. Yeah. So when this Godzilla versus Kong thing hits, they see the Sarnoff interview as killing their dream in the immediate term. So they yeah. turn around and they go after the studio again. Maybe not even realizing that in a couple of weeks, we may actually get a green light yeah. on a Snyderverse in HBO Max. Listen, it's a mess. And it's a mess of WB's making. So I have no sympathy for whatever is happening to them. Yeah. But this is the Pandora's box you open when you kind of go down this path and you're an organization that is pretty obviously been dysfunctional for a while. This is where we end up. Now, mm -hmm. I'm going to put a question back to you. Okay. Which is, I think within this, something people are not talking about. So you have... On one side, you have this Justice League Snyder's, Snyder Cut, which has been pretty successful. On the other hand, you still have some cast members who are active with contracts on the motion picture side. So Gal Gadot has a Wonder Woman franchise. Jason Momoa has an Aquaman franchise, most notably. And Ben Affleck is somewhere in between because he's supposed to be in the Flash movie, but he's not really Batman anymore. I'm going to assume for the minute that Henry Cavill is done, even though I think he has one more appearance on his contract, but I, I'm going to assume at this point, if they're making a new Superman with, through J.J. Abrams, they're, he's pretty much out. Do you see any way that can be solved? Because to me, or put another way, if HBO Max greenlights the Snyderverse, you have maintained, with good reason, that the main cast members would not come back to do additional work on this. I, based upon what we've seen here, would tend to agree that the WB motion picture side will try to prevent contractually, if they can, Val and Jason from participating 
in additional Snyder movies. I would guess that certainly Ray Fisher would sign up again. I think he already said he would. I would guess Cavill, if he could, would side with Zack at this point. And I don't really know where Affleck stands, but he probably leans Snyder because his Batman solo franchise has been replaced. I guess, how do you solve that? Like, do you see, and if they recast, like, it, so if there's a second set of Justice League characters in the Snyderverse on HBO Max, what does that do to the whole dynamic? There's, obviously there's a power struggle, right? And WB doing what they've done for over the many, many years that they've been doing, they don't want to be strong on. And this is exactly what this is. This is this is what it is. They're being bullied into doing something that they're not even thinking about wanting to do. But as you said, HBO has targets to meet, which I'm fine if they do it on HBO Max. But you're still sort of bullying them into doing something that they don't really want to spend the time and money to do because. There's, there's just there's just a bad taste there. Now, if you go the route of replacing them, let's say you replace Henry Cavill, Ben Affleck. Let's say you replace those two. People are still going to be mad and upset, you know, because they love Henry Cavill as Superman. People, for some reason, love Ben Affleck as Batman. And I'm not even not, I'm not even gonna say they love him as Bruce Wayne because he was never Bruce Wayne in none of those films. It'll be a difficult, first of all, it'll be a difficult thing to get all those people together to work again, barring their schedules. We got to see what Zach is gonna do because he's not only being offered it from HBO Max to have for an exclusive deal, he's also being rumor being offered something from netflix for an exclusive where army of the dead is going correct yes so we got to first see what zach is going to do if we see that zach signs with hbo max exclusive deal we see those headlines guaranteed it's happening guaranteed it's happening will those guys come back most likely most likely but we got to see what zach is going to do but again how is those w, how are those WB execs gonna feel about doing if they care about money, they're gonna do it, but they're not gonna do it with a with a with a smile on their face. In the in, you know, out in public, they'll smile, but behind closed doors it is gonna be brutal. Yeah. Yeah. And so 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 let's go back, let's go down this rabbit hole even further. So as you said, there's a rumor that Zach has two exclusivity deals out there. One is from HBO, from HBO Max, not from Warner Brothers. It's from HBO Max. That's, you got to keep that straight, people. That that those are actually two different things. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other is from Netflix. So clearly, creatively, Netflix is the better deal, right? He's dealt with the worst of studio culture on the WB side. Part of me is like, why would you even want to be in the same? Exactly. Exactly. But Snyderverse is kind of his baby. And from a rights perspective, he'd never get it back if he goes to Netflix because Netflix can't pull DC character rights away. So he'd have to basically say, I, I am going to leave this, you know, for good. Yeah. Um, my question to you is, we've seen kind of like how the fallout, the reactions, the, the fan culture, it gets very polarizing. So I, again, I go back to, okay, Gal Gadot and Petty Jenkins go off and make Wonder Woman 3 under the WB label. HBO Max greenlights the Snyderverse, but WB says you can't have Gal Gadot as your Wonder Woman anymore in Justice League 2. So Zach goes and finds a second Wonder Woman. And let's not forget, he found Gal Gadot. He, he asked her. Yeah. So what happens then? Are we left with a situation where like the same fan base that loved Gal as part of the Snyderverse and into her solo franchise now turns on them because they're on the WB side and there's a new Wonder Woman in the Snyder? Like that's the part that boggles my mind with like 
the way Warner Brothers has said, like with this multiverse setup for them, they they feel like they can have like four or five different Batman and four or five different Wonder Woman. So yeah. I'm just trying to figure out like what that even like what that even looks like if that's where we wind up. I think if they go about it that way and saying to Zach, you can't have Gal, Zack Snyder will cast someone else, possibly someone even better. Who knows? I think you have to, it can't be all or nothing sort of situation. This is not one of those things. You have to, there has to be some compromise, right? So if you get the Snyderverse, it gets greenlit, but you're not going to have some of these characters or this is not going to happen. So as long as you get the Snyderverse, be happy. Because it seems like Snyderverse fans are not happy unless they get what they want. And it's sad to say, because you have to compromise in situations like this, because this, this is crazy. This is not normal, what's going on. No. So there has to be some compromise. If that goes about, you just got to be happy with them greenlighting the Snyderverse and accepting whatever comes after that. I agree with you. I mean, for me, it's not an issue. I mean, it gets confusing. It's weird. It would be weird to have, but you know, look, recast happens. We, we understand that. The difference with this though, is like when Marvel, you know, dumped Terrence Howard in favor of Don Cheadle, that's a recast. This would be like a splice and additional cast at the same time, which is a little bit weird, yeah. but you know, look, I've maintained from the beginning that this would not be the end. I feel like every day we're getting closer to that. And it really make, you know, amazingly, I would never have thought this. It might actually be in Zach's hands in the end. If he's got two deals on the table, he's got leverage, especially now with the reviews being decent. And I know like people are trying to fixate on the day one audience for this. And I think mm -hmm. they're kind of missing it. Like this mm -hmm. is not like the theatrical releases that yeah. are same day and date because it's going to stay on the service. Yeah. So this is the kind of thing that will kind of build and continue to draw audience and be in the queue. And I think you got to measure the audience for Snyder Cut like over time as much as in the day one. I would have thought he would have been at the mercy, like his universe would have been at the mercy of the studio. And now I almost feel like he might be reasserting some control uh, by the time we get to the end game of this. And I, I think that's amazing, but I think it'll just, it, it almost feels like it'll come down to, you know, he clearly wanted this film in part for his own personal reasons and own family reasons. And there was all that emotion tied up in it. Yeah. I can't tell when he's laying out the whole universe, whether he has the same passion to go all the way to the end of Justice League 3 mm -hmm. versus having a creative license at Netflix to kind of just do what he wants. And that, that for me is a little bit of a harder call. I know he talks passionately about comics because he loves comics, but like, yeah. I don't know if, you know, push comes to shove, if he wants to step back into the Warner Brothers waters for what would probably be five years. If you think about it, what it'd take to do two Justice League movies, it's not like five years probably to get those, you know, written, like written, shot, edited, released. Five more years of your life doing nothing but that. I'm not convinced he wants that. In order for him to get those two extra films done, because there would be two extra films, correct? I think they'd be two extra films and they would be at least as long as what we just saw. So you're kind of talking like four films, really. He would have to shoot back to back. Are it's those actors? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, James yeah. Cameron shooting Avatar, yeah, four Avatar yeah. movies. It's the same thing. Are those actors willing to be tied up for that long? Are those characters not working for that long? Do they have other, do they even want, the question is, do they even want to do it? I would like to, if I could ask each and every one of them, would you come back for a Zack Snyder 2, um, Justice League 2 and Justice League 3 film? You know, and then would Zack Snyder sign a deal with HBO Max? If he does sign a deal with HBO Max, then it will just be a matter of time, but you got to sort of think about the WB or the, can the WB wait it out and be like, okay, let's wait this out two or three years. These guys are going to get over it or whatever. They'll get over it. They'll get over it. In my opinion, if you're going to do this, HBO Max, that's it. Or don't do it. 
and move on. The other things, listen, I think when the Batman comes out, a lot of people are going to forget about certain things. We got to see what Green Lantern is going to look like because obviously they didn't want to use Green Lantern specifically because they're doing something. With well, they specifically they are using John Stewart. Exactly. Very clear. They don't. They don't want nothing. They don't want his character to have nothing to do with Zack Snyder's universe. There are other things in uh, in production or are going to go out that they just want to move on. WB clearly wants to move on, but if HBO Max wants him to sign a deal to do, I mean, if he would have to do. He would want to do the Snyderverse. If that happens, then it'll get done. But let's see what WB uh, has, you know, let's see what their tolerance is for what's happening. Because I'm pretty sure they're not willing to be bullied into doing something they don't really want to do. It sucks. It sucks when you're the one paying up the money. You know what I'm saying? And again... If you do it, charge 50 bucks. Go ahead. Yeah, and I was going to say the other thing, too, is, you know, Jason Kalar has been very silent on this. He's the head of Warm Media. In theory, he sits above Sarnoff, Hamada, Toby Emmerich, and Casey Bloys, right? So he's above all of them. And, you know, Warner Media is also part of AT&T, right? So there, there are, there's a level of hierarchy and management that is yet to be heard from. And listen, the end of the day they're the ones who make the final decision if they say all of you guys need to play nice in the sandbox then that's what they're going to have to do um if they don't and if they make a choice you know yeah you know we want to see what their priorities are i mean their their publicly stated priorities would seem to be hbo max but you know you never know push comes to shove as things are reopening we're getting back to you know getting back to theaters um little by little which i know we'll talk about but just in the category of things that were entirely predictable from the minute they went down this path, I think this is 1000% predictable because we knew yeah. this was not an ending. Yeah. It was part one. We always knew that. Yeah. That's why I said to you, I was like, we're not going to get an ending. And we didn't. And now we're here talking about Restore the Snyderverse because it was better than people expected and it did do pretty well and it's it's got people's interest as something of an event so the wb has not no again no one to blame but themselves for, for yeah the, at least the pr side of the mess yeah i just want to reiterate my stance on the whole justice league thing before we move on to something else and you can you can surely chime in after i'm done to give your opinion on it but listen the justice league film was good but for me who's who has been watching justice league since i was a kid with the super friends reading comics um seeing the animated film seeing the animated uh show justice league unlimited i'd rather watch those any day of the week than Zack Snyder's version. Anytime I'll watch that. This was good, but in my opinion, Justice League should have been great. And for many people, they're throwing around these words, great, fantastic, the best. These adjectives are not deserving for this film. It was good, but it wasn't. To me, this should have been way better than Endgame and Infinity War. And the reason why it could have been if it would have been done from the beginning, not to say copy Marvel, but to sort of put a storyline that is cohesive and and the characters are more represented as who they are in animated films and the animated series and then comics these for me were for some of them were characters i'm not familiar with with regards to batman batman was cool but he wasn't he wasn't batman superman was cool but he wasn't he wasn't superman cyborg was was fantastic 
Wonder Woman was fantastic, but Flash and Aquaman, although they were, they weren't to me. They it just didn't live up to what I expected them to be. You're hitting on it, which is the vantage point I came at my viewing experience was trying to look at Man of Steel, BBS plus this together. And I think in that regard, he succeeded in, uni in unifying the vision. But that doesn't mean that I loved the vision, if that makes sense. So I gave it three stars because I felt like the execution of what he had put together was better than I expected. Yeah, okay. But you can't That's rewind fair. and you can't rewind in a race some of the fundamental disagreements I have with the choices around characters and you're hitting the point, which is if we just do a very simplistic score part of casting and portrayal, Zach's about 50-50 in my book, right? He nails Wonder Woman, like A plus. Great casting, great performance, great action, as we talked about. So we gave her a Snyder Cut Oscar for her portrayal. Cyborg, nailed the casting, nailed the arc, Nailed the effects. A plus. I like Momoa better than you. I think that's still more of a win than a loss. I think he is charismatic, even though it's a different visual choice. I like Momoa. I put him in the plus column. And then I also think supporting characters, pretty good. That's the other one I give him credit. So Joe Morton, Connie Nielsen, a lot of the people that are around the main characters, uh, Amy Adams, Diane Lane, Kevin Costner, Russell Crowe, like mm -hmm. really good choices. Yeah. You have that on one side. The problem is on the other side, you've got Superman. Superman, great effects of Superman, but the Clark portrayal, as we talked about many times, they just couldn't figure it out. And the yeah. choices they made, they didn't get there with. Yeah. So it just falls incomplete to me. Yeah, yeah. Batman, as you said, visually stunning when in action, but the Bruce Wayne to me never got there. Yeah. We don't see the world's greatest detective. Yeah. I just, seems too angry at times and quite honestly i never bought him as the ringleader of the team which he's not in the comics he's the outside so fundamental choice don't agree with it therefore batman to me is on the other side yeah and that doesn't even get begin to get to lex luther which i think is a just a colossal miss like i, I don't think that's in the universe of acceptable so you kind of you and then flash which we've talked about yeah. So you kind of look at those major pieces of the equation and you're sort of left with like just as much good with just as much that, you know, didn't get there. And then you kind of got like dark side in the middle, which is like, seems promising, but we, we didn't realize it in the way that Thanos was. So I just kind of give it an incomplete. So yeah. to me, it's like a 50, yeah, 50. And that's yeah. really kind of feels like where we are. This is very polarizing. And that's yeah. really feels representative of how this is being perceived. So it's not legendary, it's polarizing. Yeah. You know, and like if HBO Max greenlights it, I'll watch it. Yeah. But it's gonna be a mess every <laughs> step of the way. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Listen, I've seen bad hoot superhero films. I saw Captain America in 1980s, whatever, whenever those films uh came out. I saw Dolph Lundgren as the Punisher. I'll watch any superhero yeah. film, yeah. you know, but when you've done you know and i don't want to veer too off but just to make a point when you've done what marvel has been able to accomplish with their characters and with their whole universe you know you want something at least at that level or better for me anyway well and i can and when i say mess i don't mean mess just from the standpoint of inside zach stones i mean more from the wb house yeah 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 everything yeah, that's coming no, out yeah, of yeah. because i can already guarantee you based upon what we saw in the nightmare sequence i think the zach snyder version of dark side controlling superman is going to look pretty cool at points yeah, yeah, yeah. and i think the final battle with dark side between the forces of earth would look pretty cool oh yeah it doesn't change the struggle of Superman raising his kid with Lois Lane to be the next Batman. That's a tough one. Like, so, you know, I, but what the, you go back to the, the Marvel comparison and, you know, the thing I always point to is Marvel's hit rate's not a hundred. We know no, that. No, 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 the no. The difference is that Marvel course corrects a lot faster on the fly 
because they're generally in tune with what works and what doesn't once it goes up on the screen. So they rarely double down on bad decisions once it's clear that, hey, that was a choice that didn't execute. Yeah. And we got to talk about that on the next show, the parliament. I don't know if any of you have heard of that term called the parliament. These are individuals and this is in this this word um, uh, was mentioned from the person I believe he's directing the Falcon and the Winter Soldier or, or one of the writers. It was the most meta story of all time. And it's funny <laughs> because you and I have had this guy. Co- I literally had this conversation. We had this conversation on this podcast. Yeah. We talked about that. We had this conversation of we've never heard of Kevin's deputies. Yeah. It was always him. And, yeah. he, and our concern was he was getting stretched too thin. Yeah. And then this thing dropped. And I was like, this is straight out of Winter Soldier where Alexander Pierce is on the roof and they're digitizing <laughs> these holograms of these people who are super. That's the exactly. part of it. Yeah, right yeah, there. yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, we gotta we gotta talk about that on the next show because that is that that is important to understand the organization. See, when we go to WB, we talking chaos. When we go to Marvel, we talking about organization or business, right? We gotta talk about it next time. The Parliament. Stay tuned for that. Let us know in the comment section Last below. Call, though, yeah. before, before we get off this topic, yay mm-hmm. or nay, Snyderverse on HBO Max. Are, are you now a convert? Do you believe it'll happen? Man, that's a tough... I don't think... I don't know if you'll let me slide with I gotta see what Zach does. <laughs> <laughs> are you asking me yes or no? You can take it however you want. I'm with you on this... When I heard he had the exclusivity deal at Netflix for the first time, I kind of was like, this might not happen because Zach doesn't actually want to do it. Like he actually has a better option. Up until now, I never crossed my mind that he would have a better palette to paint with than the Snyder. But that's what I'm saying. It's like, yo, when you're presented with that offer of doing whatever you want to do and dealing with a whole new set of people, you know that you're going to have control you know you'll probably have you know some nice conversations about where you want things to go it's not going to be people overseeing you right at the wb you're not going to have that pressure of saying oh i want to do this and somebody having to tell you no you know what i'm saying i do but i'm saying given what every wouldn't that be the most fitting and bizarre irony of this entire saga is that if at the five yard line, Zack Snyder has an offer to deliver, to restore the Snyderverse, and he's the one that walks away, what would the fan base do then? Given the if fan base, tr- given, the, him, given, the, the given the, given the, given, no. given the fan base's track record, they'll turn on it. They'll turn on them. I think. I think they'll turn on them. Look what they're doing to WB and like w- with them saying no. And like if Zach says no, they're going to be like, you imagine though, after all this, if he does have a deal and he says, I'm good, I'm taking the Netflix money. Yeah. I would, I would take Netflix because I wouldn't want to work under that kind of pressure because it's going to be there. It's going to be, you're going to be in a room full of vultures. <laughs> How could you criticize him from a creative or personal standpoint for saying, I got my closure for Autumn with this movie, I'm going for a fresh start. Like, yeah. Given every, all these cross currents, wow, that would be, that would be a, a that, 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 that'll be a story. That'll be a story. Um, yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you think about all this, the Snyderverse, the fans doing what they're doing with anything that comes out of the WB and review and get review bombing them just let us know in the conversation what you think about this fiasco